last glimpses of hope have faded from the world, and terror has overwhelmed the planet. As the land of the free is engulfed by the enemy, three heroes rise against injustice to fight for the American dream. This is the Freedom Chronicles, three thrilling tales of action and adventure for all freedom-loving Americans. Look at Joseph Stallion, a.k.a. Gunslinger Joe, a former professional quarterback enslaved by the Reich. After a public display of defiance against his oppressors, Joe was captured by Uber Commandant Roderick Metza, an American dentist turned Nazi collaborator. But Joe was a man who wouldn't be caged. During his escape from Metza's research station Omega in Springfield, Illinois, Joe encountered a garage full of Panzerhunden, and it gave him an idea.
Joe was headed for a collision course with Uber Commandant Metza. Would Joe escape Research Station Omega? Find out for yourself in The Adventures of Gunslinger Joe. While Gunslinger Joe and other brave Americans were fighting across the United States, one woman took on the Nazis from the shadows. Enter former British OSS agent Jessica Valiant, a.k.a. Agent Silent Death. Hot on the trail of a sinister plot, Agent Silent Death found herself in the offices of Paragon Pictures, once a purveyor of Tinseltown's finest films, now a Nazi propaganda machine. Would Agent Silent Death find her target, the Nazi collaborator Chuck Lorenz? Found my way inside. Wasn't too much hassle. Now, to find where Mr. Lorenz is hiding.
Jessica Valiant was gunning for Chuck Lorenz, but could she get to him in time? Read all about it in The Diaries of Agent Silent Death. As Jessica Valiant pursued her prey, another hero from the war was fighting a very different battle. U.S. Army Captain Gerald Wilkins, renowned for his brave deeds during the war, had been on the run since the Nazis atom-bombed Manhattan. Captain Wilkins was on a mission to destroy the deadliest weapon ever made, the Sun Gun. But first, he had to infiltrate the cannons of Kodiak Island. Now we're in business. Time to find those cannons. Mein Bruder wurde vor kurzem zwecks Arbeit zum Sonnengewehr beordert. Eine ziemlich heiße Sache, sage ich dir. Ist es im Weltraum nicht eher kalt? Er läuft ja nicht draußen rum, du Idiot. Oh, natürlich nicht. Weiß ich doch. <lacht> er hat mir erzählt, dass das Sonnen... <lacht>
Captain Wilkins always completed his mission, but could he put an end to the wrath of the Sun Gun? Don't miss the deeds of Captain Wilkins. From the mind of the great author and Chrysal rebel Curtis Everton comes The Freedom Chronicles. Three tales of inspiring action and adventure during the fight against the Nazis occupying America. A trilogy of stories from the resistance that will lead to the downfall of the global Nazi regime. Get them today. Terrorist propaganda. Ban them all! Take a look at Joe Stallion. That's me. Rookie quarterback for the Springfield Firebirds. Once a man living the American dream. Now I was a slave to the Reich. It was the end of a long, grueling season. Me and my teammates on the Ultimension team faced the elite Aryan All-Stars in the Uber Bowl. My script was already written. Never score, get roughed up, and make the Reich look good. It was either that slaving away, busting rocks in the Hillsboro coal mines until you croaked. So, we played the game. This was no longer a game. This was a puppet show. And I was done being a puppet. So I fired off that ball like an old pigskin. Arrest that man and throw him into the coal mine! Enter Uber Commander Roderick Metza. I had heard stories about him. Stories from his dentist years. Stories that would make your heart race like a horse. Wait. He might still be of use to the Reich. In parts, that is. <laughs> Enough. Take him to research station Omega. Lights out, football man. <clears throat> As I slipped into oblivion, I heard the boiling anger rising from the crowd. But all I could think of was Metza's face. Where had I seen that face before? Hey, you! You dead, pal? Still here, buddy. Still here. Come here, pal. Gunslinger Joe. Man, the way you used to throw that pigskin. I'm Eric, by the way. What about the game? You sure ruffled Uber Commander Metz's feathers out there, pal. But listen, he's gonna cut you up. Shut up in there. Come and make me, chump! Listen, man. There's a revolution starting in America. You gotta join the resistance, Joe. Help me bust out of here, then we head up to the top floor of the Oak Street Hotel, where the resistance is. We can get this thing. What do you say, pal? That's it! Remember, pal, Oak Street Hotel! Oak Street! This is a lesson, football men. Muscles will always be... I wouldn't let Ares' death go to waste. My only chance was to escape this place and get to the resistance at Oak Street Hotel. I just had to play the game harder from now on. Play rough. This was a place of secret horror. I knew I had to get out quickly, or I'd end up like the rest of them. This is Uber Commandant Metza speaking. Cell Block 101. I have a specimen request. Prisoner 398, Joseph Stallion. Escort him to Laboratory 8C. In pristine condition.
didn't see that one coming, did you? Before the Nazis took over America, Papa taught me how to shoot out on the farm. He said it might come in handy one day. How right he was. Reminder to all prisoners. Lights out is at 1800. No exception. Violators will be punished. Everyone, this is disgraceful, frankly. Did you actually fail to obtain a stupid football player? This man is a mockery of the Reich. I expect Gunslinger Joe in shackles by my feet now. Was I supposed to end up like that? Laid out on a slab waiting to be harvested to create some monstrosity?
Pause. Crazy idea. It was time to take one of those dogs for a walk. The Nazis were scared. They had the city on lockdown, trying to secure a dam about to burst. Something about turning the Nazis' monstrosity against them felt poetic. I was getting attached to the pooch. Wished it was real for a minute. Then I thought about it spitting fire through my neighborhood. Maybe it's better we had to say goodbye. I 
was closing in on the resistance. A safe haven to rest up. Joe, you almost missed your appointment. The doctor will see you now. Roderick Metza, you son of a bitch. Your fellow Americans, for Christ's sake, how could you? I'll tell you why. My ancestors were humiliated during the Civil War. I am the fruit of their humiliation. When the Germans came, I knew they were bringing justice and order for the white man. And now, here you are, a slave to the Reich. Order has been restored, and so has my ancestors' honor. Anything to say before I seal your fate, slave? Yeah. Where do I know your ugly Nazi mug from? No. You know what? I'm not going to dirty my hands with this subhuman. I'm not even going to spare him a second thought. You finish him. In a flash, it finally came to me. Those cold eyes. That crooked smile. Metza was the same Nazi who took my father all those years ago. All I wanted to do was play ball. Out there, I was free. Out there, no one could touch me. After the war, my father formed a resistance group with some friends. They fought hard, with every inch of their lives. Eventually, like most of the resistance groups out there, they were captured. The sky was the color of fire the day Uber Commander Metza took Papa away. Same color as the fire fading out inside me. If anyone needs me, I will be at the secret police headquarters. Heil Hitler! Yes, Commandant. Heil Hitler! Now the Nazis were about to put an end to my story. Well, that's what they thought. <laughs> One thing was clear. Metza was a dead man. Ah, oh, it 
It's game time. Let's hear it, folks! Holy... First quarter! Let's give a warm welcome to our boys, the German elite! Stairs. Hast du es Metze schon gesagt? Mach ich, wenn ich ihn sehe. Er ist doch direkt.
I knew one thing. That I would introduce Metza to the bitter taste of revenge. The taste of dirt after getting laid out by a man who shouldn't have pushed into a corner. Springfield was a ghost town, like the quiet before a coming storm.
the surveillance cameras. You really embarrassed me in front of the Oval Commando, Joe. I told him you were dead. Dead. A slave embarrassing an Uber Commandant of the Reich? Embarrassment, Joe. There is nothing I hate more than being caught with my pants down. The stallions are no quitters, old man. Hell's bell, son. Yeah. Papa had ignited the fire inside. I wasn't about to let Metza get to my family. I had passed through the eye of the storm and come out as something else. A beast of vengeance. A machine built to destroy Nazis. You stay here, Papa. Rest up, okay? Go on, raise some hell, son. After Springfield, I traveled across the Midwest. I was a man on fire, burning with a singular purpose, to destroy Roderick Metza. I was a hunter, a predator following a trail of blood. And my prey led me to the Topeka Space Center in Kansas. The fire was burning ever brighter inside me. But I knew I was in for a heck of a fight. Metza had caught a case of the jitters, hiding away in the high security space center in Topeka. There was no place left on Earth for him to run.
bastard's office. Could still smell him in here. Smelt like a dentist's office. Made me never want to see a dentist again. So, Metza had flown the coop to Venus, hedging his bets on destroying America. Well, I wasn't gonna let the game end like that. I had to find a way inside that launch station. Maybe there was a hidden opening somewhere.
something to hide in. Play the stowaway game on board a ship to Venus. Going into space, I realized I was signing my death sentence. This was a one-way ticket. End of the line for Gunslinger Joe. But I had to keep moving. I had to keep fighting. For Papa. For America. Eternity had passed by in that container. My body ached. I didn't even know up from down. I just knew I had to get out, find Metza, and stop him from using that sun gun.
I thought you were dead, Joe. Persistent. Just like your worthless father, slaving away down in those awful Hillsboro mines. And look where his persistence got him. Six feet under. Dina's heat was making me sweat worse than two a days in August. Fleeting memories. Not much to hold on to. Only the winds of hate carried me forward. Justice, Joe. You could have had a decent life taking a dive on the field for the Reich. Now look at you. A limp dish rag groveling on the floor. Before I shoot your brains out, any last words? Uh, why haven't you fired the sun gun yet? The sun gun yet? Oh, that's not operational yet. <laughs> Are those your final words, slave? No. But this is. Go wrong, you Nazi bastard. I laid into that son of a bitch just like my papa taught me all those years ago. For him and all brothers and sisters who had suffered at the hands of the Nazis. <coughs> Metza was finally dead. I was pretty roughed up myself. Just when I thought the game was over. It looked like we were going into overtime. My word. Look at that handsome bloke. OSA secret agent Jack Valiant. Super spy for the British Empire. The Queen's greatest asset. Except for one other. Agent Silent Death. My name is Jessica Valiant. During the war, I helped my husband perform his duties behind the scenes. Inseparable, both on the job and off until... 1946. Jack bought me time to escape. If I'd had a choice, it would have been the other way around. Honey, that, after the love of my life was taken away from me, the world submitted to the Nazis, 
and my faith in humanity crumbled. I fled to Brazil, choosing a life in anonymity. It was a simpler life. A steady flow of fine alcohol and charming strangers served as my medication. Kept me afloat, without purpose or direction. Then one day, I received a mysterious folder with the image of a crimson bulldog imprinted on it. Inside were the briefs for three assassination targets. Torture expert, Uber Commander Han Stiglitz. Hollywood Nazi collaborator Chuck Lorenz and the infamous General Gerhard Dunkel. What I read shook me to the core. The files provided evidence implicating these men as responsible for the betrayal, torture and murder of my husband. These men had to die, and so I departed for California in the American territories. First on the list was Uber Commander Hans, the man who tortured Jack. I'd spent the past years in a delightful blur of drinking and debauchery, but killing Nazis was like riding a bike. A dozen slit throats later, I found myself inside the Gestapo office in Sacramento, California. From there, I had to find my way to Uber Commander Hans's office at the top floor. Uber Commander Hans was my first hit in years. Felt like a stiff drink to take the edge off, but I had to stay focused. Crawling through those vents, I did regret one thing. Not diving into the hotel minibar the night before. From drunken midnight beach walks in Sao Paulo to skulking through Nazi Tosses Central, I wondered if I was up to par after all these years. Männer, seid heute besonders wachsam. Ich hatte eine ziemlich schlimme Vorahnung. Man könnte sagen, sie kam mir im Traum. Und wo sind mein Tee und mein Schinkenbrötchen? Herr Gott noch mal!
I could smell the sickly sweet perfume he'd chosen this morning. And so another Nazi bell end had been sent to hell. Good riddance, Uber Commander Hans. I could feel the tug of war inside, a craving to escape this dreadful reality. But I couldn't. Not until each and every one of these Nazis was six feet under. Until my Jack was avenged. Next up, the man who betrayed Jack. Actor, filmmaker, and Nazi collaborator Chuck Lorenz. Once an undercover agent for the OSA, now a stooge for the Reich. Like so many American traitors, that snake was generously rewarded for collaborating with the Nazis and had been promoted to head producer of American propaganda. Lorenz was now a powerful man with powerful friends. Well, this powerful man was about to have a rendezvous with Agent Silent Death. So this was Paragon Studios. Mouthpiece for Nazi America, doling out rubbish propaganda to the masses. Spotted the glass-domed main offices draped in Nazi banners beyond the sound stages. That's where my target would be. All right, people, line up, and once again, do not look into the camera. Every time we start over, we're taking more marks out of your paychecks, so let's get a break this time. Places, people. This is Charles Lorenz speaking. As you know, I have a very important shoot coming up. Now, with the horrible murder of my friend Uber Commandant Hans Stieglitz, I want everyone to keep their ears open and eyes peeled, all right? I don't want any degenerate terrorist sneaking around on the premises. It's Charles Lorenz again. I have told you countless times, no one is allowed to disturb me when I'm in the zone. Acting requires perfect concentration, and you are ruining the preparations of my upcoming immaculate performance with your constant idiotic interruptions of flimsy requests and complaints. Thank you.
The Paragon Studios office building looked exactly like the place a wanker like Lorenz would fester. Everyone, the upcoming shoot for the new movie Blitzbench Returns, Vengeance for the Aryan Race, has a guard role available due to sudden illness. You have a drinking problem, bartender in Sao Paulo once said. <laughs> Bloody Nazis are marching on your streets and you're telling me I have a problem? The world had gone mental, and I just needed a drink. Maybe drinking wasn't the solution, but it sure soothed the pain. Look. What else was there? Anyway, I was a big girl, and I decided when I could drink. Bloody hell, Jessica. Stop obsessing about your drinking.
I'd planned on spending the end of my days in Brazil. I was at the point where it seemed my years of strife were finally over. Jack was fading away into the distant past, obscured by the spirits medicating my soul. I should have realized that's not how life works. And now it came down to this. General Dunkel, the man who killed my Jack. The coward had long ago decided to hide away on the moon. General Dunkel would be my last hit. Then I could go back to my old life and never return. Jack always said he was over the moon whenever something good happened. Well, my love, how I wish you were here. Moonbase Gamma was the loathsome General Dunkel's domain, a military research complex. It was just a matter of time before someone discovered the bodies in the transport, so I had to move fast. Herr Schmidt won't be making it to the meeting, boys. It was time for more extreme measures.
was finally in over my head. Maybe Jack would never be avenged. Well, at least I'd die trying. As I stood over Jack's bane, a sense of emptiness overcame me. The deed was done, and yet the hole in my heart would not fully heal. I watched a million stars sparkling in the void. Earth looked so serene from up above. How charming a con man was distance. And so I returned to my old life in Brazil, determined to end my days in oblivion. Wasn't a bad way to go, all things considered. But something had changed. 
That empty feeling remained and no liquor could fill its void. Then one day, another letter came, signed by the enigmatic Crimson Bulldog. The American Revolution was in full force, and the resistance needed me. I understood in that moment what the emptiness meant. This wasn't just about avenging Jack. No. This was bigger than me. So I traveled back to America to fight the Nazis once again. Maybe I was heading towards certain death, but Agent Silent Death would not go quietly into the night. The war against the Nazis was long, but ultimately, a failure. My war should have ended when the Nazis dropped the big one on Manhattan, my hometown. When the war ended, we were stranded. No one was gonna help us, but we didn't care. We had a job to do. Take out every Nazi we could on our way to the Promised Land. We were fighting a losing battle. Most of us were dead or missing. I'd been on my own for most of the 50s. Then someone got me a message, ordered me back home to Alaska to stop Black Sun. Stole a sub and set sail for Alaska. Found all sorts of experimental tech, along with something called a camp wanderer. Fit nicely. These boots were made for walking and kill him. After 20 years, I was back in America. I had a mission. It was time to show those Nazis there's still fight left in this old dog. Front door's heavily guarded. I don't want to make too much noise. Let's see what these boots can do. Felt unreal being back here. I had a job to do, but damn, I wanted a goddamn cheeseburger.
was almost out, but I couldn't leave any loose ends. Whoever ran this base was close, and they needed to die. Absolut perfekt sein. Nichts. Unsere Operation in Alaska durchzuführen ist brillant, General. Niemand würde darauf kommen, dass wir das Sonnengewehr von hier aus abfeuern. Nicht so laut, Idioten. Erwähnen Sie nicht mal den Namen. Man weiß nie, wer mithören könnte. Ist da jemand? If I was going to find anything on Black Sun in this base, it'd be in here, somewhere. A party on a sub is arguing from the Kodiak Highlands. Looks like I've got my next target. Everyone was gathering in one place. Sounded like a party. A party this old man was gonna crash.
Felt good knowing there were that many less Nazis on American soil. The rest were heading for the Kodiak Islands. I was gonna tag along. My first mission back in America was successful. Base was cleared out. Or so I thought. Hands in the air, now! I slipped up. Left enough of them alive to get the jump on me. I was counting how many I could take down before they got me. Then, a miracle happened. Final warning! Take the All the Nazis were struck down, as if by divine providence. Hey, Jerry. Looks like you got my letter. You son of a bitch. To my surprise, standing right in front of me was Clive Cross, my second in command. And a woman I'd never seen before. <laughs> I knew I'd see your ugly mug again. Been a long time, Jerry. Have I got a story for you? You ever heard of the sun gun? Clive was there with me from the beginning. We gathered all the misfit soldiers we could, formed the Scorpions together after D-Day, and became the Nazis' worst nightmare. Great to see you, Cap. Time to bring you up to speed. This young lady managed to find both me and you. This is Ginny Wilkins. Williams. Ginny Williams. Pleased to meet you, Captain. I've heard a lot about you. Yeah, uh, pleasure. How'd you find us, anyway? Don't have time to explain. We've got a job to do. There isn't much intel on this sun gun, but we know it's bad. Think Derbistroffer multiplied by a thousand. General Schwartz is hosting a party in his private U-boat, where he plans on firing it for the first time. Say no more. Nazi death weapon built by Nazis, run by Nazis, and about to be covered in dead Nazis.
Take it you've made it to the station? Armed and ready. Ready to kill some Nazis. Is everything about killing with you? Cross said he's in position. Hurry up. Out. If I were her age, I would have been decked for talking like that to a superior. Her dad should have taught her some manners. Gun Station Alpha. The guns there should be enough to take out a super, super cannon.
Whoa. Was that you, Captain? Didn't sound like that shot hit. Give me a break. I don't understand this weird technology. Sounds like you're done over there, Captain. That gun is gone. Any word from Cross? Still nothing. And that gun is still intact. You might need to check on him. Clive works in the shadows. Never cared for that. I want the Nazis to look the man that killed them in the eye. That's enough gory details for me, Captain. Head that way and see if Cross couldn't use some help. Ginny out. I want them to know. Ginny out. She hung up on me.
Terry. Come in. Mission's over, buddy. Make this easy and surrender to my friends, won't you? What? Did they capture you? Sit tight, I'll be right there. I'm a spy, you dolt. I've always been part of the German Empire. Clive Cross isn't my real name. I stole these dog tags from some Untermensch's corpse. Surrender! Damn it! just tried to kill me. I, I had no idea. He came to me saying he knew where I could find you, and I, I trusted that fucking traitor. Calm down. Where are you now? Where can I find Cross? He's in the super cannon, and he's gonna fire it at me. We need to take that thing out. Captain, come in, Captain. It's Cross. He's Cross is what? God damn it, I'll be there soon. Shoot that gun any minute. I'll see what I can do. I'll have to improvise.
out of there, Jerry. Well, you were always a tough piece of shit. I'm gonna fire this super cannon on that little girl and take her out with most of Alaska unless you surrender. I'll never surrender. Wrong answer, Jerry. Fire! One last thing, Clive. You remember Rome? Rome? What the hell does that have to do with... Oh, shit! Glad you remembered. See you in hell, Clive. No, cancel! Cancel it, you... Ah! My most trusted friend had revealed himself to be a Nazi spy. And I couldn't let that slide. You should have never crossed me, Cross. Any last words, you goddamn traitor? <coughs> Damn it, Jerry. The fight never left you, did it? Not for a goddamn second. See you in hell, old friend. Cross's betrayal hurt, but we still had a job to do. And at least I didn't have to go it alone. We can still make it to the sub from here and stop the launch of the Sonnengewehr. Are you sure you're up for it? Are you kidding me? I'm always up for killing Nazis. Jesus, you always have to be that way. Is it always killing and murder with you? What do you think this is? We are at war. Jeez. Hum was right about you. Always spouting your, I've got a job to do and I'm gonna do it and, and shoot and kill bullshit. Listen, I've been fighting for 20 goddamn years and, wait, your mom? Yes, you idiot. My mom, Henrietta. I'm your daughter, you stupid son of a bitch. My daughter? Back in the 30s, I was forced to enlist in the army. Training was hell, but there was one thing that kept me going. My sweetheart, Henrietta. Hattie was everything to me. Made me feel important, feel needed. We were even planning on tying the knot the day I got out of the service. That day never came. I never went home. Never heard from Henrietta again. You know what you've got to do in there. Just come back. There's still a lot we need to talk about. Yeah, yeah, I'd like that. And be careful, okay? You'll be trapped down there with half the German army. That's where you're wrong, Kenny. I'm not trapped down there with them. They're trapped in there with me. My best friend was a Nazi. I have a daughter. This General Schwartz was about to destroy a chunk of America and I had to stop him. I was gonna kill every goddamn Nazi in my way. I had only been back in America a few days. My best friend was a goddamn Nazi and I had a daughter I never knew about. Didn't know how to feel. Good thing I was in a boat full of Nazis for me to tear through.
Are you inside? What the hell? Get out of my head, Spectre. It's a portable radio. How old are you? This dumb thing? I thought it was to keep water out of my ears. You put them on underwater? <sighs> Whatever. I found some blueprints on the base. If you keep moving forward, you'll run into the bulk of the enemy forces. That suits me just fine. I need to feast on some... That's stupid. There are maintenance hatches nearby, and you can avoid them. Take those. Oh. It was surreal, receiving orders from my daughter. And she was right. I had a job to do. I wasn't here to kill Nazis for laughs. This is most of the Santos and Junior Fury. I just tell you about fighting down there? Hey, I had no choice. I didn't even want to fight, I swear. Seriously? Nah, it was great. <laughs> <sighs> From there, you can directly access the barracks. But try not to make too much noise, Captain. Sure. And Jenny, can you call me? <laughs> I'll think about it.
I had given up on a normal life. Figured I'd go down in combat. Maybe that's what I wanted. Suicide by Nazis. With Ginny around, though, maybe there was something to fight for. To live for. Schwartz was close. My long journey was coming to an end. I was going to shut down this Sonnengewehr. Sonnengewehr. Sun gun. Heute findet das wahrscheinlich wichtigste Ereignis in der Geschichte des Deutschen Reiches statt. Sie wurden persönlich ausgewählt, um Zeugen des Starts der größten jemals von Menschen gebauten Waffe zu werden. Heute starten wir das Sonnengewehr. Nach Jahrzehnten der Forschung werden wir mit dem von unseren Wissenschaftlern entwickelten Sonnengewehr von... Enjoy your meal, gentlemen. Because it's your rock. Party's over, Schwartz. Make it easier for both of us. Why don't you come down here so I can tear your head off? You are a cockroach, Wilkins. A relic of a long gone era. And you will not be around our grand achievement. It's over, Schwartz. Back away from the console. Over, Herr Wilkins? Don't you know who I am? My grand mission will not be stopped. Shoot me and I pull this lever. Firing the Sonnengewehr. Throw down your weapons if you don't want your precious daughter to be its first target. Damn it. You win, Schwartz. <laughs> you old fool. Nothing will stop the sun and get air. Damn it, no! <laughs> what? What's going on? Dad, come in. It took a while, but I took out all the satellite dishes in the area. I don't think they can contact space from there anymore. You're saying he can't fire the sun gun, and I can tear this motherfucker apart? Yes, sir. Give him hell. <clears throat> Roger that. Fuck. God damn it! Captain! This is all a misunderstanding. We can work through this, can't we? Dad, you did it. Welcome back. Yeah, yeah. Mission complete. You didn't do too bad yourself. I think we did great. You know, Dad, I... I think we make a pretty good team. Think you got another fight left in you? We did make a pretty good team. And I wasn't ready to hang these boots up yet. 
That sun gun is still out there. We've still got a job to do. Thank you.